this is Marlene Rabu from uh, Batam. Uh, I love listening to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Sela Sazakau from uh, Vatukola. I only listen to Gold FM, only the classic hits. I'm Vale and I'm working at Golden Grove Resort and I love listening to Gold FM because it plays a really wide range of classic I'm Sein Isakio from Kashmir Lotoka. I like Gold FM, but only the classic hits. Gold FM, only the classic hits. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spade. This is FBC News. Tonight, remains found as 10-year-old missing vehicle pulled out. Farmer arrested with sexual comments against minor on Facebook. And the Education Ministry to come down hard on teachers who use social media during school hours. A 10-year-old mystery has taken a new twist today with remains found in a vehicle which disappeared in 2006. The car belonging to the Kumar family was today pulled out of the Navo River and with it came the news that remains were found inside the vehicle. Pakasa Rainima has more. Police officers pulling up the car which disappeared 10 years ago without a trace and with it several questions on what happened that dreadful day in 2006. While the bodies of 42-year-old taxi driver Davendra Kumar and his wife, 32-year-old Nirupa Devi, was found in 2007, the couple's two children, 9-year-old Dipshika Kumar and 3-year-old Edwin Kumar, were never recovered. Today, the question remains, police work on new leads, including the discovery of the remains in the salvage taxi. Uh, we have uh, finally retrieved the, the car. It's now sitting at the uh, old hospital in Navua. Um, our scene of crime are working in that uh, uh, the scene of uh, crime, and uh, there are evidence of uh, human remains in the car. The four were last seen leaving the Assemblies of God Church in Dalia, Navua, on the night of 19th April 2006, with the matter of the family being missing was only lodged on the 3rd of May. Former crime sergeant Pradeep Kumar says he still remembers it was raining continuously for days before the disappearance of the family. I'm really, really satisfied, really satisfied with what happened. It was a nightmare for me. I am a retired now. I retired in 2011 and I was thinking all the time, where is this guy? The family had moved to Navua from Lambasa few months before the disappearance and a relative had gone to invite them for a birthday party when they discovered the family was not seen in the area for a month. Since the car has been found now, I'm really satisfied. And the cause of investigation will be carried out from here, what really happened to the car and the family. The car was filled with water and it looked rusty and the windows were opened, filled with mud. Head of the five-member diving team, Sergeant Chon in the line says his team did not lose hope at all when they were tasked to do the job. I would like to thank the Lord, firstly, mostly. I would like to thank the boys. Uh, we've been working uh, really hard uh, upon receiving the report on, uh, on Friday. The mystery of what happened to the Kumar family 10 years ago will now be finally looked into by police with the retrieval of the missing car this afternoon. Toka Sarainima, FBC News. A 20-year-old farmer of Vatukarasa in Nandronga has been arrested in relation to an alleged Facebook posting about a two-year-old recently. Police Chief of Investigations and Intelligence, ACP Luke Navella, told FBC News the man will be charged soon. Farzana Nisha has more on the story. Police have taken a man in custody for publicly making a sexual comment about a toddler on social media. The, uh, the father and uh, the child and uh, we got a statement from them. Navella says there are a lot of groups using the social media to attack the character of others which is uncalled for. What we are currently doing now uh, is what is available in the law. Uh, we are uh, getting them in 
interview and judge. At the same time, we want to um, want people who are using the media is using the in a positive way. Don't uh, misuse uh, media in trying to attack the character of people. Uh, it's not good and it's not uh, professional. ACP Navella says the man will be charged with the offense of indecently insulting and annoying any person. We now join Farzana and Nisha live. Farzana, what more can you tell us on this case, which has caused a lot of uproar within the community? Jackie, this is another case of a person taking advantage of the social media sites. As the police have said, they are now working with other stakeholders in ensuring there are legislation in place to counter this. The suspect is expected to be charged later tonight and should appear in Suva Magistrate's Court tomorrow. Jackie. Thanks so much for that update, Farzana. The Education Ministry will now be taking action on those teachers who use social networking sites during school hours. Education Minister Dr Mahindra Reddy says use of social sites like Facebook and Twitter by the teachers during working hours is becoming a common issue nowadays. Shireen Shivan reports. Education Minister Dr Mahindra Reddy says in the last 18 months, Cases of using social networking sites by teachers during school hours are increasing. He says the message is clear. His ministry will not tolerate teachers who are found doing this. We want parents, we want uh, stakeholders, management, members, community to come forward and tell us. Uh, for example, if they walk in the, into a school compound and see a teacher inside the classroom using Facebook, uh, laptop, etc. That's not acceptable unless it's an IT class or something and they're teaching something in IT. Often teachers claim that they also have a personal life and can post whatever they like. The education minister reminded them that there is a social media policy in place for teachers. The teaching profession is different. They are role models and students build over time trust and confidence in them. And if, if they see the teachers behaving in a manner which is not uh, benchmark against the standard norms of the society, then students will lose their trust and confidence. Meanwhile, the Education Ministry is still investigating the case of a primary school teacher of a prominent school in Suva who had posted her partially nude photos on Facebook. This teacher, we are investigating and uh, you know, who uh, established, the, established the Facebook, who is the Facebook account, who has access to that who posted and what was the motive behind it. Once that is done, then we can take an appropriate action. Some parents and teachers had complained that such action by the teacher is not expected and they are concerned that students who are on social media can access the pictures online. Sharin Shivan, FBC News. The teacher who allegedly locked a year two student in a fridge two weeks ago has been terminated. Education Minister Dr Mahindra Reddy says the teacher was terminated following a detailed investigation by the ministry. Meanwhile, the student is currently undergoing counselling and is recovering at home. The teacher is expected to be charged later. The first contingent of the Indonesian army have begun reconstruction works on Queen Victoria School. The rebuild in the wake of Cyclone Winston is expected to be completed over three months and will involve up to 100 Indonesian military personnel. Maggie Boyle headed to Thai level and compiled this report. Down but not out. Queen Victoria School closed indefinitely after Cyclone Winston left most of its buildings uninhabitable. Under the Adopt a School program, the Indonesian government stepped in to take over the school's reconstruction. They coordinate with Fiji military and Fiji government and our embassy to coordinate everything to prepare uh, uh, for the next batch. But second batch is uh, 30, uh, 27%. Uh, and we look now, they, 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 they rehabilitation for the church, and after that, uh, the third batch, 70% uh, will come at 1st June. Phase one of the work will include the demolition of two dormitory blocks to be replaced with a new two-story building. Republic of Fiji Military Forces liaison Major Miguel Ewara says their own engineering corps will assist in QVS's restoration. Um, we have about uh, a platoon plus which is around uh, 27 to 30 men already here. 
as advance uh, party for the uh, for the Indonesians. Then we we'll, uh, they'll be sending over another 70 uh, around the, the 1st of June. Uh, the completion uh, date at the moment is planned for end of August. First on the priority list is the QVS Chapel, followed by the main hall, which is expected to retain its original columns from when the school was first built in 1952. Uh, we use. Uh uh, the panel, new, new, new design, uh, new technology from Indonesia that now still in shipping, still in shipping uh, soon. So all of the material that is required for the construction here is being imported from Indonesia? Yeah. QVS is expected to be open for classes as early as the third term of this year. While the cost of repairs is still being finalised, it's expected to run into the millions. Maggie Boyle, FBC News. Coming up on FBC News, tourism industry out to lure more visitors. And farmers learn to better skills and productivity. Stay with us. I'm Sarah, I'm from Tafwa, and I love listening to the DFM Rocks. My name is Freddy, I'm uh, from Gamiaton, I listen to Mario on the traffic jam in the afternoon. Hi, my name is Sala, I live in Asinu, today FM Rocks. My name is Denasa and I'm from Lutoka and I love listening to Today FM. My name is Lulamila, I work at Golden Point Resort, I love listening to Today FM, it rocks in Rakiraki. I'm Mary from Mandera, I love listening to Today FM, Today FM Rocks. We love listening to the FM, to the FM Rocks. Today's hit music. Oh. Welcome back. This is FBC News. Fiji's tourism industry will need to produce a cohesive approach to provide visitors with the best Fijian experience it can offer. With tourism stakeholders seeking government's intervention to lower taxes and levies imposed on it over the years, providing quality service delivery has been seen as the way forward to lure more traffic our way. Madhya Mbolaitamana with this report. It is the overwhelming feedback local operators have been getting from those they have been interacting with over the last two days that has harnessed the great need to raise the bar to the next level. The perception is reality um, and for many that they, they see that pricing is an issue. Um, we just need to here, I guess, focus on what we can control um, and continue to provide excellence to, to the, the visitors to Fiji. And I think um, one thing around the world, people will always look for quality. Um, and that's what Fiji has in spades. My wholesale partners who are saying that Fiji is becoming to look a bit more expensive than the other, our, our comset uh, destinations. Eh? Yeah. And I think for us to, comp uh, to compete uh, in that, we should up our, the, the experiences that we offer for our guests in our individual properties. For tourism Fiji, while propping Fiji as a prime destination in the region is on the cards, the need to stress on delivering quality experience for our visitors could not have come at a better time. But then you need the services, you need the Talanoa treks, you need the shark dives, you need the golf, you need the surfing. All of the niches come together as a package to achieve a destination that has so much to offer instead of just white sandy beaches which a lot of other destinations are known for. With talks on the concerns of the stakeholders centred around the increased taxes and levies imposed on the industry, Bradley says Team Fiji will present its submission to government. There has to be taxes that are equal in distribution across and we need to make sure that it's equitable for all parties. Now at the moment the government has set out what they have to make the taxes from last year. We're now in the opportunity to talk about it again. The Fiji Tourism Expo will be closed by the Minister for Tourism, Faya Square, tomorrow evening. Madhim Tamana, FBC News. Corrections officers at Vature Kuka in Lambasa have been challenged to put the rehabilitation of inmates at the forefront of their duties. Corrections Commissioner Francis Keane spoke to the officers at the start of his visitation to corrections facilities in the north. Eleanor Trangaiviu with this report. In his first visit to Bono Lebu since taking up the role of Corrections Commissioner, Francis Keane stressed to his officers the important role they play in changing the lives of inmates that are under their care. Yes, you're the correction officer, but it's a call of the correction officer. If you work as a rehabilitation officer. 
The Fiji Corrections Services Rehabilitation Program, widely known as the Yellow Ribbon Project, has successfully transformed the lives of countless inmates. How you do that rehabilitation is to ensure that at the end of the day, then those who are under our care when they leave are gates. Okay? We go back into society, we become useful and effective members of their families, of their villages, of their communities, okay? and most importantly, of this country, Fiji. Kin is a true testament to the rehabilitation program itself after spending time behind bars almost 10 years ago. Speaking to journalists after the parade, Kin says there are plans to expand the Yellow Ribbon program. Uh, we had uh, looked very closely at our rehabilitation unit. We are looking at several strategies to ensure that uh, we get the best out of what government is giving us in our funding to ensure that when people leave or go through the various rehabilitation programs, that it is effective. The former Navy commander also had a Talano session with the officers after the parade. He is in Tavioni today and will be doing site inspection in Vaturekuka tomorrow. Eleanor Turangaibu, FBC News. With increasing environmental pressure and economic hardships, farmers need to practice smart farming. This was relayed to more than 30 farmers attending the Increasing Agricultural Productivity and Income of Vendor Farmers project organized by UNDP in Nalsori. Kelly Vavala has the details. Vendor farmers usually work in family units and provide an important link between farms and municipal markets by supplying fresh produce to retailers and consumers. We want to help them to uh, make their business better. Uh, with the training today, the topic is agribusiness and farm management. So what we want them to do is to look at farming as a business and not just the way of life. So as you would see, we're teaching them on our record keeping. That's one thing we really want to emphasize. With the training will not only benefit the vendor farmers themselves, but also expected to have beneficial ripple effect in the municipal markets. Jack, I learned to actually analyze my farming business in terms of what I plant and sell so I can know if my business is doing well or needs to improve. I can say that this training has changed my mentality on how I can manage my business and to make more income. Oh, myself, I just came first time in this program, always doing uh, vegetable farming, all the vegetables. My all the vegetables that spoil in this flood. The project will assist the farmer vendors to improve their agricultural productivity and enable them to run their farm businesses more efficiently and effectively, thus enabling them to produce a better quality and a greater quantity of crops, while paying close attention to environmental and economic sustainability. Kelly Vavala, FBC News. A first for Miss World Fiji this year is the newly included talent category. Miss World Fiji director Andy Blake says this will be of great help in preparations for the chosen Miss World Fiji. Judging for best talent will take place tomorrow with the winner performing at the finale. Former Miss World Fiji queens Brittany Hazelman, Koini Vakalaloma and Kareen Erbsleben all performed dances whilst Charlene Tafunai sang a song. We've decided to incorporate talent because it is such a huge um, event at the Miss World International Pageant where we tend to find, you know, um, amazing singers, amazing dancers. So we thought, you know, Fiji has a pool of talent that is yet to be discovered. So why not Miss World Fiji? Students in tropical cyclone Winston affected schools can expect new furniture in schools in a few weeks' time. Around 6,000 chairs and more than 3,000 desks have been donated to the Education Ministry by the Australian High Commission. Australian High Commissioner to Fiji Margaret Toomey says the donation came from the New South Wales Department of Education in Australia. Our schools, uh, the children, the teachers, the uh, management and the community at large will uh, see a great relief from the, uh, with, as we distribute this. Sports Now, here's Jamie with the latest. Nakataki and good evening. Coming up in sports, more overseas camps for Fiji Sevens. And Sugar City side prepares to face Nandi in VPL. This and more after the break.
pulau na vici, ada ko plasio matairi, ngon mai na na pulau pulau tapi uni, aku satu ko nanti, andu telita ina warongo, ena bola FM. Bola, bola FM, nomor dua en seri. The Vodafone Fiji 7 side left the country this morning on a mission to become the first Fijian team to win the World Series title back-to-back. -back. While the team's training camp will be based in London for a week, there could be more overseas camps as they start preparing for the Olympic Games. Vashnil Prasad reports. A final check-up before the Fiji 7's team departed for London this morning. These players will be based in Lansbury for a week and there are plans for more. Before heading to the Olympics, you know, we'll have another training camp outside of Fiji before, before going there. And right now, the, you know, there's still excitement in the, in the squad. Uh, you know, we, we, we travelled early. It was time to capture memories for the fans who gathered to say goodbye to the team. These players are surely looking forward to the training camp in London. It's uh, basically, it's an exciting last leg. Uh, reason why we say that, you know, we've got uh, four players in France waiting to come on board and um, it's the first time as well that we'll be you know spending uh, five days in another country training so it's good for the boys as well as we build up towards Rio. The Sevens World Series title is not the only thing on the mind of these players. Uh, ben said Sevens now is uh, based on uh, fitness and uh, we want to take the fittest team in Paris and in London and we want to take the fittest team to, to Rio. And uh, I hope that uh, five players are going to be really fit and really looking forward to gel with the boys and fight for our sport in the team next week. History could be rewritten this month and no doubt we will once again rise up to celebrate if Fiji wins the series title again this year. Vashnil Prasad, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the Fiji 7 side left for London with only 11 local base players. He's been left out due to a medical condition on his leg. Uh, he hasn't healed up. Um, basically, got a bit of infection in it. So, I mean, his uh, hemi is, is, is all okay. It's just the infection in his leg that needs to heal up. And uh, by the time we get back, it should be, should be okay. We spoke with, uh, with doctors at a civil private hospital yesterday, able to see him. And before we made that... Um, decision to, to keep him, to have him resting. The Latoka football side is looking forward to meet neighbours Nandi in the Vodafone Premier League this weekend. The Blues who currently top the table with nine points as the informed team of 2016, having registered wins in its last three matches. Rohit Deo with this report. The Blues have stamped their mark and will be the team to beat in the Premier League this season. After the 3-1 win over Lambasa last Sunday, Eletia Tuilau captain side is ironing out mistakes ahead of facing Nandi this week. From after the game la, last week against Lambasa, Lambasa gave us a good run on the field and we had mistakes and this week we don't want to be carried away about the win last week. Latoka has so far defeated Nandronga, Dreketi and Lambasa this season and the captain says they will treat every team as the same knowing no team plays to lose. Whether it's a small team or big team, we take every team as a, a good and a champion team. So every game for us in this uh, league, uh, we make it as final. The match kicks off at 3 p.m. on Sunday at Nandi's Prince Charles Park. Rohit Deo, FBC Sports. Manoj Kumar has won the Mohammed Bajsha Memorial Open Chess Championship that ended in Suba today. Kumar fended off a strong challenge from Ronald Terubia, Tayone Sikivo and Calvin Prasad to win the four-day tournament. In the intermediate division, Dinbandu Primary School's Year 7 student, Rudra Prasad, won in style, defeating more experienced players in the likes of Zen Borg, Menash Farid and Russell Talonga. Yeah, there are a lot of uh, school kids here, but uh, these kids uh, they are very well versed with the uh, chess now. They've been playing for a long time, so uh, uh, they're pretty good. And uh, we, uh, like myself, I have to be very careful uh, because uh, these kids have uh, been playing for a now long time. So they're pretty sharp and upcoming. Meanwhile, a 16-member Fiji team that will take part in the World Chess Olympiad in Azerbaijan will be announced later tonight. That's it from Sports This Evening. It's back to Jackie now with business. <laughs> Thank you.
Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority is warning the public to be aware of people who are posing as FERCA officers and are demanding for money. In a recent case, a person identifying himself as a customs officer called a business person in the Western Division and demanded money. Acting Chief Executive Viswanath Das says investigations revealed a person is not an employee of FERCA. Das says they are still trying to identify the caller. Under the Crimes Decree 2009, impersonating public officers is an offence and the maximum penalty is three years imprisonment. Gamer Resort and Spa, located three miles off Taviuni Island, has made the top ten list for world's best luxury dive resorts. The list put together by Fred Garth of the CNN praised Fiji as being a long-time celebrated dive kingdom. While the windward and eastern parts of Fiji experienced showers today, the western part of Fiji enjoyed a bright and sunny day. Lautoka and Lambasa were the hottest today on 31, while others followed ending the day between 28 and 30 degrees. The land areas of Lao Group, Lomaiviti Group, Benga, Vatu, Lele and the nearby smaller islands and Kandavu, strong east to southeast winds with average speeds of 45 kilometers an hour with gusts up to 65 kilometers an hour. For the rest of Fiji, some showers, especially in the afternoon or evening, that's to be expected tomorrow. And the further outlook is brief showers over the interior and eastern parts of the larger islands, elsewhere mainly fine. And recapping the main stories for tonight, remains have been found as 10-year-old missing vehicle pulled out of Navo River. A farmer has been arrested with sexual comments against minor on Facebook. An education ministry will come down hard on teachers who use social media during school hours. For these stories and others, you can tune in daily to our sister radio station, Gold FM. On to this week's poll question, we are asking... Is it right for Sedelpa to try and bring back the GCC? To answer, visit our FBC website. Send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page, FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FBC underscore news or simply hashtag FBC News. You've been watching FBC News. I'm Jackie Spate. Good night. Radio Fiji ki Sundar Sundar Yado ka khazana एक दम बचपन के दिन याद करा देते हैं हमारा नाम जोनी नाइडो है हम रहता है मलोलो में और हम टैक्सी ड्राइवर है हम सब टाइम अपन टैक्सी में रेडियो ड्यूटी सुनता करते हैं हम सिंगाचोका के हैं हमारा नाम है रोजी हम यहां पे रेडियो फिजी 2 सुनते हैं राम राम मैं रमेश प्रसाद बोलता हूं तब बताऊं मैं कोई रहता हूं मैं जब ही सुना रेडियो फिजी 2 ही सुनता हूं रेडियो फिजी 2 देश की धड़कन